morning to all. Uh, this time we don't have any specific slide. Uh, I'm just going to show uh, the small improvement which, have, which they have done for in the Android 2.3. Okay. Uh, in the last week, I just uh, uh, covered about uh, NDK programming. In a little bit, uh, since basically I showed a small uh, NDK uh, example. Now in 2.3, they added, uh, with this, they extended the NDK uh, support. Okay. In the 2.2, till 2.2, okay, you cannot write an uh, entire application in the native languages. Native languages, basically the C and C++. Okay. Uh, you can write only a part of your uh, programming in the C or C++. Uh, Basically, the Java uh, uh, virtual machine, the Java uh, JVM, has support uh, for this kind of uh, interaction. Basically, interaction from the Java application to native application. That is called the JNI. Okay, it is not uh, 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 something new. So they have done for uh, Android. Okay. Uh, so they utilized the JNI feature till uh, two point uh, uh, two. So that you can write the UI part in the Java language, basically, uh, it's compatible for the Android. And you can write complicated part, basically, uh, which needs to access your specific device, or you want to write some mathematical algorithm. So that can be pushed to the native part, so that no interpretation uh, overhead will be not. In um, 2.3, what they have done is basically they have even exploited the uh, feature of JNA and they bring down the entire uh, application programming into the native. Uh, but still, uh, it is not purely a native one. There will be some blue uh, code. That code will take care of transferring call from the Java to, uh, to the native. But for a programmer, uh, basically, those information will be hidden. Okay. So here, I'm going to show uh, a simple example, uh, which is already is part of the NDK uh, uh, SDK, sorry, uh, NDK toolkit. Uh, you can uh, later you can go back and see, uh, and you can map what, what, whatever I'm saying, whether it is really So uh, here, Before that, I just want to know uh, how many of you done uh, some NDK uh, programming or uh, just uh, seen some NDK examples. Okay. So, uh, only two or three hands. <laughs> okay. so, uh, so, in that case, I just start with one simple uh, uh, NDK example and then move to the uh, latest one. Okay, so that I just will give you a kind of overview of what, what I am talking about. So, uh, this is the NDK uh, folder. Uh, uh, here you have a folder called uh, Docs. It's very very useful. A lot of uh, system related uh, documents are available. People those who are interested in the system side uh, have a look at it. Even for NDK programming, it will be very useful. Uh, so there are a number of samples uh, available in the sample folders. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to show the Hello JNA uh, code, the same code which I showed in the last week. Okay. It's a very simple uh, code. So who, uh, people already uh, familiar with the job, uh, Android programming might be familiar with this folder, REST, source, Okay, and test. 
So uh, you source all your Java code will be sitting it. And rest all the resources for your application will be sitting It may be an image, it may be an XML layout, or it may be a song, whatever you need, okay, whatever resource needs. Okay. Here there is an extra folder uh, <coughs> called uh, JNA. Sorry. Uh, yeah, JNA. Uh, there is a folder called JNA. So here, all your C, basically your native code, C or C++ code will be sitting inside. Okay. So I'll just show uh, the So that you can access the functions and variables from the object. Okay. Uh, in a normal object-oriented programming, you will be having control. Uh, you will be having uh, access to the uh, member functions and member variables. Okay. Basically, here you can do that using this G object uh, parameter. Okay. So uh, <coughs> this is the entry point to the native. Uh, in, in up to 2.2, this is the entry point. So here you can write. Uh, C code, it may be a uh, simple like uh, returning a strings, or it may be a mathematical uh, formula which does a matrix manipulation or something like that, transpose, whatever it may be, for a graphical programming or anything like that, or it may be a, like a data collection from the network, whatever it is. Okay. And that, do the complicated or heavyweight process in the native part, just return the uh, value or results back to the Java program. Okay. So, uh, that is a normal way of uh, doing NDK programming till 2.2. Okay. So this functions uh, can be called from uh, on create. There are a number of uh, states. Okay, the life cycle in the, uh, in the Android application life cycle. There are a number of states. Okay, so whichever is, is, a, is a meaningful or, or uh, a correct state, you can call this functions and do the operation. Yes. Basically, it depends on what kind of application you are going to write on the. Uh, uh, up okay. So now uh, in the 2.2, they actually extended this. So, Here, they call it as a native activity. Okay. So 
native activity uh, example provides um, some insight on how to write your own native. Here, one important thing is missing source. Okay, because everything is in uh, uh, C, uh, C plus plus. Okay. So we don't have that uh, source uh, directory, okay. But still, we need to provide the Android manifest file and the default property, okay. Both is mandatory because for the uh, uh, launch uh, operations, Android needs the manifest file, okay. There only we will specify which one. We might be having number of activity in our application programming. We need to specify which one to start first, okay. So those information will be specified in the Android manifest uh, example. So just quickly look at uh, the manifest example. Okay. So my package name is form example native activity. Okay. The uh, rest of the parameters you see more or less same. Only differences. This part. Activity, okay. Android name, I need to specify that this is the Android apps dot native activity. Okay. So this is mandatory. So this will give an indication to the uh, Android system that this uh, particular program or particular activity is coming from the native. Okay. So you can also uh, create your own activities, like you can subclass it. Okay, you can derive it, you can create your own activity and you can specify that. Okay. One example, uh, sorry, one uh, change. And the second is, is a metadata. Okay. So, uh, people those who are, uh, 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 attended the last uh, NDK uh, part, okay. In that, the NDK code is basically compiled as a library and will be attached to the APK file, okay? When your application is running, the application will use your library whenever it is calling the particular function, okay? Here, in complete uh, native activity uh, uh, programming also, your program will be given to the APK asset, SO file, not object file, okay? So that object file name we need to specify. So that is the second change. There are two uh, changes. One is the uh, class name. Basically, we need to specify that this is the native activity. And second is the library. Okay. Once your program is compiled, it will be available as an SO file. That SO file name also we need to specify. Okay. So there are two uh, information which we need to provide in the XML file. Normal uh, C programming, our function will start with main. Okay, so here it's called Android main. Okay. So 
once the application is started, the function will be transferred to this function. After that, it depends on you how to take it forward. Okay. So here, uh, they are going to create one simple OpenGL engine, and they are going to uh, show different color screens on the uh, uh, application. Okay. So you see here, once it is on control breaches, so we are going to set the engine. And there are some uh, monitors, uh, basically to uh, check your sensors. Okay. After that, there's a big while loop. Okay. So within the while loop, it is generally waiting for the input events. It is very similar to normal uh, application programming. In application programming, also you'll be having a POE loop. So within that, you'll be waiting for all your input events. Once input is received, you'll, or input event is received, you'll transfer the control to any of the specific functions, and the function will process it, and immediately you'll come back to the main loop. Suppose if you, once you go out from this while loop, basically uh, uh, whenever you receive an uh, event, to process the event, you go to the different function. If you stuck within the function, then you will get an application not responding yet. Okay. So whenever you go out of this loop, you need to come back immediately. Okay. So here in Android, Android basically detect the application responsiveness basically by checking the event collection. So your application got some events. Okay. If the event is not picked up by the application within a few seconds, then Android will detect that this application is not responding. Okay? There is no other way to detect your application uh, responsiveness. This is the only parameter for the system. Okay? So, programming, uh, you need to have the uh, signal uh, environment. Uh, you can't do it on a uh, plain uh, uh, Windows machine. You need to have all the supportive uh, uh, compilation tools and other things. Okay? Uh, so this manager has a signal. I'm doing it on Linux, so uh, I don't have any issue. Compilation part is simple, just you need to pause this uh, program. Okay? Uh, this is two command, NDK build. Okay? This is a single command, it will take a uh, uh, reading android.xml uh, and compiling the entire source code and creating the library. Okay? You see, it just created the library, basically it contains all your native active people. Does it depend on make? Uh, yes, 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 yes. So you need to have make. Yes. Of course, nowadays people are not using Zigbee. They have a virtual machine. I have a complete uh, system. Okay. So uh, actually, we are uh, kind of one part, one part of the compilation. Basically, we compile the native code. Next part is we need to compile this as an APK. Okay. To create an APK, we need an Android uh, tools. Okay, that Java tools. Okay. Basically, those uh, tools are going to 
understand the Android, um, sorry, uh, the manifest XML, uh, manifest.xml, and it is going to add adjustment glue on over, over this uh, library, okay, over this way. that uh, native activity uh, code into the Eclipse, okay? You can import uh, Android project, okay, from the already existing code. So I just brought in that activity. There's a new category called the platform tools. Okay, so all the platform specific tools we brought in. 
specific place. Okay, the text A D L an Android uh, um, uh, in, uh, which is a interface definition language compiler. Okay, the A D B A D B is a uh, common tool for uh, connecting to the emulator or connecting to the real device. Okay, so these are the things that change. Normally, these tools will be present in the tools folder. Okay. If you use any of the older tools, normally they look for the ADP in the tools folder and then apply it. Okay? So you can create a shortcut over there and you can use it. That is the simplest way. Uh, otherwise, uh, you, can, you can copy to that place. Okay? So here the uh, uh, AAPT, uh, ADP, ADM, and text compiler, okay? everything they move to a platform, uh, platform tools folder. Okay? That's a, another change. And a Google Market License, that's a new uh, component uh, which is added into the, uh, the SDK. And the SDK, man I gave the manager also has changed. Previously, you can access only the Android repository, that is the default one. Uh, now, the, uh, uh, whenever you want to add a, a third party, you can just add a URL of that. And you can maintain it now. They separated it out, okay. And by default, they include Android, uh, basically the Samsung uh, Galaxy image. Okay, need such information. So I will be install that. You can see uh, third party. basically Android uh, Galaxy Tab images. So those images also available. Suppose if you want to write a program for the tablets, you can use this uh, SDK image and you can create your emulator and you can run and test your Android uh, uh, programming on the Galaxy Tab. Previously, we have to manually uh, give the uh, resolution for the emulator and we have to create it. Now that uh, uh, work is taken over by this uh, plugin. Sorry, uh, uh, STK image. There are other uh, STK images also available. Um, I think uh, one of the book publishers, uh, I forgot the name. So they also provided uh, uh, their tablet uh, images. So that's also available. And Motorola, uh, those people are already having their own images. If you are writing specifically for a uh, uh, specific uh, device and then you can use their own uh, SDK images. Okay. So I'll stop here. Um, maybe if you have any specific question on NDK, I'm happy to uh, answer. Uh,